Welcome to ISTV English News. This is Panorama giving you the news. Let's see the top stories. No untoward incident reported in polling of Hyanglam Assembly constituency by election, concludes peacefully. And galleries of Mopal Kangje Boom constructed with public donations lack maintenance, causing serious inconveniences to sports persons and visitors alike. The news in detail. Contrary to what people generally believe that the polling in Hyanglam Assembly constituency might witness some word undesirable incidents as the election campaign was unusually intense with a lot of throwing of brick bats among the candidates and their party leaders, the polling in was apparently peaceful. No untoward incident has been reported from anywhere in the constituency till late afternoon. A large number of electors of the constituency came out to cast their votes since early morning. The voter turned out at most of the polling stations till afternoon was 60%. As the galleries at Mopan Kangjebung are not maintained properly, sports persons and visitors are facing serious inconveniences. As the committee concern is not paying attention to maintaining the galleries including the BIP gallery that had been constructed at a cost of crores of rupees which was collected from the public as donations, some other associations have stepped in to maintain the galleries. Our sub-editor Narubam Philips and video journalist N. Ranjan did an in-depth story on the sorry state of affairs of the galleries. They reported that Mopan Kangjaibung is a historic playground for the sports persons and lovers of Manipur. Particularly for the footballers of Manipur, the ground is regarded as their own soul. The galleries at the playground were constructed more than 10 years ago under the initiative of the then governor of Manipur, O.N. Srivastava, by collecting about 2 crore and 50 lakh rupees as contributions from the generous citizens and altruistic organizations of the state. There are two galleries, including one VIP gallery. All sections of the people, including the sports persons, particularly the footballers, expressed happiness and satisfaction over the construction of the galleries at that time. Besides, a number of football players who played at this ground had achieved the invaluable opportunity to play at the national and international levels. But uh, what is so disappointing to the sports persons in particular and the public in general is that the galleries have been left without the slightest semblance of maintenance for a long time. People have expressed much dissatisfaction and disgust over the way the galleries have remained neglected. In the absence of any authority to look after the maintenance of the galleries, visitors are found urinating at any part of the galleries and ground. The toilets of the BIP gallery had remained clogged for long and the stains emanating from them is nauseating and that makes all visitors feel like puking. What is more, there are some people who do not seem to have any semblance of civic sense and just squat at any corner of the gallery to answer call of nature. The authority has also not bothered about repairing of the damaged portions of the gallery at all. As the Mopan Kangjebung Youth Preservation and Maintenance Committee has not been apparently carrying out its mandatory duty to maintain the galleries, there are times when the old Manipur Football Association AMPA has been taking upon itself to clean and sweep the galleries. The empty packets and covers of eatables left by the visitors and spectators who come to watch the football matches or such lives scattered here and there. 
There are broken chairs in the VIP gallery which have remained unrepaired and not removed, making the gallery look really abundant. Some football players said after an exhausting play, when they enter the toilet or the clock room, they feel like throwing up. They expressed their desire for the authority to maintain the gallery and the ground properly. At present, the 9th Manipur State League Tournament 2014, organized by AMFA, is going on at the Mapan Kangjibu. If the condition of the galleries is like this, even during the period of an ongoing popular tournament, what would be the condition of the galleries at other times? Many people asked. Amfa collects about 8,000 rupees daily during the tournament from selling gate past. Additional income is also being generated through other means. Moreover, the hiring charge of the field is from 800 to 1,800 rupees is paid to the maintenance committee per day during the tournament. As the maintenance committee fails to carry out its duty, how is it utilizing the amount of money that it gets as revenue from various sources is a question that the people of Manipur would like to know. <laughs> now the national and international news. J. J. Alalita has been granted bail by the Supreme Court in a corruption case on medical grounds. The former Tamil Nadu Chief Minister has been in a Bangalore jail for three weeks after she was convicted and sentenced to four years in prison by trial court. The Supreme Court will granting bail today, said the AIADMK chief must advise her party's workers to remain calm and behave decorously. BJP leader Subramanian Swami has complained that following Jayalalita's conviction, her followers allegedly met threats and damaged property in violent protests. The top court has directed Jayalalita's lawyers to ready all documents within two months to facilitate an early disposal of her appeal in the Karnataka High Court against her sentence. It is said it would on December 18 ask the High Court to decide on the case within three months of that case. The court said that if the papers were not filed by then, bail would be cancelled. Jalalita's lawyer constitutional expert Fali Narimand assured the court that they would ready documents within six weeks and would ask for speedy disposal of her appeal. Jalalita is expected to be released from jail today or early tomorrow if paperwork is not completed. Our aesthetic reporters are celebrating and say the joyous festival of Diwali has come a week early for them. Prime Minister Narendra Modi met the country's top military officers at the Defence Ministry on Friday at a time when Tansen continues along the border with both China and Pakistan. He interacted with all military commanders for the first time at a combined commanders conference in New Delhi. He is expected to outline his strategic vision and get a briefing on the overall security situation. Against the backdrop of fresh firing from Pakistan since last night in the Hamirpur sector of Jammu and Kashmir, the conference is expected to focus on ceasefire violations by Pakistan and incursions by Chinese troops. The government has told the Supreme Court that it cannot disclose the names of people having black money stashed abroad. The government says that their names cannot be made public as it violates the double taxation avoidance agreement. The government says that the names can only be shared with concerned agencies. Petitioner and senior lawyer and former BJP leader Ram Jet Malani has accused the Narendra Modi government of trying to protect people with black money. The Pax Code has agreed to hear the government's plea on October 28. Bringing back black money states abroad was one of the top poll issues taken up by the BJP during the 2014 Lok Sabha elections. 
Earlier on Wednesday, Switzerland had said that it will examine Indian request for banking information on a power TV basis and provide requested details in a time-bound manner. The Swiss authorities would also assist in obtaining confirmation and genuineness of bank documents on request by the Indian side and also swiftly provide information on request related to non-banking information. A young woman from Mizoram was found dead at her South Delhi apartment with multiple stab wounds. The man slipped with an engineering student has been detained by the police as a suspect, said sources. The crime comes barely 24 hours after two men from the northeast bought coal center workers were beaten with cricket bats in the room they rent in Gurgaon near Delhi. They said the gang that attacked them shouted racial slurs at them. Though head attacks against people from the northeast have been occurring with alarming frequency in Delhi, the police say that the murder in South Delhi does not seem to have any racist angle. Juliet Janun Mawi, 24, was found dead early this morning in her house in South Delhi's Munirka area, reportedly by her landlord. The victim was lying in a pool of blood and had head injuries, a police official told a news agency. Let's see the headlines once more. No untoward incident reported in polling of Yanglam Assembly constituency by election, concludes peacefully. And galleries of Mopan Kangjebung constructed with public donations lack maintenance causing serious inconveniences to sports persons and visitors alike. Thanks for watching our news and for more updates, please stay tuned.